Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to get started with Simple Schema. Now, Simple Schema is a way that you can develop a schema for your Meteor applications and your Mongo database. That way, the data that's coming into your database is more secure because the database is going to be knowing what it needs rather than just accepting any kind of data. So the schema is going to keep your application organized. It's going to keep your application more secure. And the best part is a Simple Schema has recently moved to be an NPM package. And not only that, but it's no longer a Meteor specific package. It works with other Node applications. So that means you can take these skills that you learn about Simple Schema with you elsewhere in case you need to go to a new platform. So let's get going right now. Okay, so let's keep this going here. We now have our router and what we want to do is add a simple schema. So what we have here is this package LDD no simple schema. Now this package used to be a only Meteor package. And for a long time, if you would have used the intermediate Meteor series, that's what we would have used. However, it's recently, as in very recently, moved to become an NPM package. And not only that, but it's going to work with all sorts of things and not just Meteor. So as you can see, there's even a change log if you're migrating. There are some simple differences, uh, some really small things. For instance, if we want to have something be um, optional or an index or something like that. There's maybe some different syntax there. We'll go over that as we go. But what we need to do is go ahead and copy this NPM install. You'll notice something interesting here when we do this. It's not simple spelled correctly. It's actually S-I-M-P-L hyphen. Now you want to make sure you have that. You want to have hyphen hyphen save in here as well. Uh, the reason being is this package was probably already had something in NPM with that other name. This way, uh, you're making sure you're getting the absolute right package. So make sure you get the spelling correct on that one. Now, what are the benefits of using simple schema? And what are the benefits of using a schema at all, to be honest? Well, in this type of project, there's not a huge amount of benefit in this size. But as your project grows, it's going to become more and more obvious. If we head to our server, um, actually, we, what we want to do is go to our API folder. And inside of here, we have items. We have if Meteor is server, OK, uh, we're publishing, and we have our methods. And here we're inserting, right? We're checking our variables, each one. We're saying it has to be a string. And then we're inserting them in here, item one, item two. And that's great. That's really great. But you'll notice when we went ahead and voted on one, what we did is we actually added a last updated field. And we set the last updated field. But when we inserted in the first place, there was no last updated field. And so what actually is in this items object becomes a little bit more foggy as this thing grows. What we don't have is any sort of direct structure. It's just sort of as we're updating or inserting, we're handling this stuff. So this kind of direct structure is actually going to be pretty important moving forward. And defining a schema can save you from a lot of other security holes, right? Here we had to check item one and item two to make sure there were strings, but that's annoying that we're having to check every single time we're inserting or creating a method or checking that thing like that. What if our schema itself defined what items were inside of the, uh, the object itself here and what their validation would be? So let's go ahead and get started with that. So first off, let's head to our API folder and we have this items.js which is a great thing that we have this here. Now inside of this, you'll remember we created a new collection, which was items. Now above all this publish and is server stuff, we'll be refactoring this file at some point. But uh, above here, underneath where we defined our items, what we want to do is go ahead and define our item schema. Now the first thing we need to do before we start typing is simply import. So let's actually scroll down here to make sure we get the import correct. You'll see we're going to import simple schema from, and then you'll notice again the spelling here is a little weird. So make sure you keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and just paste that in right at the top here. It's good to copy and paste wherever you can with stuff like this. 
Okay, so now that we have simple schema imported, we wanna go ahead and first essentially define our schema itself. And we can do that by giving this a, let's use a constant variable, which we're going to call items schema. I have this uh, capital or camel case, um, shouldn't matter really, as long as it's not a variable name you've used before. And this is going to be equal to a new, not view, new simple schema. And a simple schema is going to accept an object. And this object is going to be what our schema is. For instance, you'll remember we had item one, we had item two, and we had last updated. Those were our sort of root level items in here. I'm gonna go over the other stuff after this. But we wanna say item one, and inside of here, this can accept a object with a type and it's an object, right? So item one is going to be an object. And just like that, item two is also going to be an object. If you've used simple schema before, you might be uh, concerned about something I'm doing here, which will be resolved in a minute. And then we'll have a comma and the last one is of course what we had was the last updated, which is going to be the type of date. You might be wondering, how do you know what types exist here? Well, if you head over to the simple schema documentation, you can see right here, uh, down here under schema rules, we have type the following types. Um, custom built class like date, array, object, boolean, integer, number, cool. So this is a good, uh, this documentation is epically huge and that's good and bad. Obviously it's great because the answers you seek are probably in here. It's bad because it's really a lot to parse, but that's the, the goods way outweigh the bad. I'm not complaining here. I think this documentation is excellent. So let's come here to our app. Um, one last thing, we have defined our schema using a new simple schema. We're not attaching it yet. So let's go ahead and attach the schema to our collection. So we want to attach items schema to items. We can do that simply by saying items dot attach schema. And this is going to accept a schema uh, like this. So we want to paste in items schema like so and we want to end that off with a semicolon so check it out one last time before i head over to my council to make sure nothing's uh broken here and you'll notice we're getting a big red error here well it's not really red we're getting items attached schema is not a function that's because items right here is a new mongo collection but attached schema isn't something that comes with uh, mongo dot collection right that's not something that comes with it so what's up well there's a great package by ld which is actually called collections 2. Um, i believe if we do a find for it here you can see used by collection 2. let's click on this and you can see uh, this is what is going to be these, uh, the package here, but important note, this version of this repo is deprecated. It wants us to please update to this new version. Let's actually select this here. And what we can do is we can add it by Meteor Add LD Collection to Core. The reason why this changes when NPM uh, Simple Schema moved to NPM uh, it made it so that the simple schema was no longer bundled into collection two. So let's go ahead and pop into our meteor folder under packages. We can come down here and paste in this LD colon collection two hyphen core. Save this. It's going to go ahead and grab collection two for us, which should include the attached, uh, schema method that we really need here. Now you'll notice. Uh, we're getting this weird error right here. You know, this all happened because of the package versions and package files that have changed. We hit to packages. Let's scroll down. You'll see we have collection to core. 
Let's go ahead and actually look at the versions file here for a second. We want to make sure we don't have simple schema. You'll notice what it added for us was collections to core at 1.2.0, which is not the version we want. And because of that, it's added simple schema for us. Let's come back to our packages file and let's scroll down here. And this is another intermediate to advanced technique. Really, if we want a specific version of a package, we can come in here and say at and then give this a version number 2.0.0, okay? And now I can save this file. You'll see it actually, some of these other ones, where you can see at 131, at 111. Um, so if you were paying attention, you probably would have seen this happening or elsewhere. But if we want to say LD core at 2.2 or 2.0.0, come back here. And what it's going to do is get the right stuff for us. At the end of the day, really what we want to see is no version of simple schema within our versions. And as I say that, it disappeared, and we should be on the right versions of everything. Now, sorry for making this so obtuse here. Uh, the issue is, is that this stuff really just changed over, and this is probably the only tutorial series on the web that is going to have this information. So uh, I want to make sure everybody doesn't get caught up in some of these issues that exist here. Now you'll notice we are getting a message about Meteor, a new version available. Let's go ahead and run a Meteor update just to make sure we have the latest of everything and that we're not getting any errors or issues that are related to whatever particular version of Meteor that we're on. So that way we're on all the good latest stuff here. Okay, now that we're all updated, let's fire up Meteor once more and check to see if we have any errors. It's always good to work this stuff out. Okay, let's head to our app. And let's hope we have no errors. Let's check it out. Refresh, no errors. Cool. Okay, so we're now in the latest version of everything. We have Simple Schema installed, and we've even got a preliminary schema up. Let's get this finished up here. So I'm going to give us a new example, and we're essentially just going to have pen verse pencil, and let's click add items. And as you can see, I'm not getting any errors here on my client side, but this obviously didn't submit because nothing's happening. If we come to our terminal, you can see I am getting errors. You might be wondering, well, what's up with that? What's up with the errors here? Um, if we scroll up, these are all really big. So let me see if I can bump the font size down and have it still readable here. Basically, the issue here, exceptional invoking method, insert new item, error after filtering out keys, your object is now empty. Okay, so basically what we're having is an issue where the schema is essentially not validating. And so why is the schema not validating? Well, for starters, one of the issues that we're having here is that we've declared that item two is a type of object. Now, if we head to node simple schema and we were to say, Let's look for a type of object. Scroll down here to find an example of any of these with the definition of an object. And you're going to notice something. We don't have a ton here until we hit this part. And what we have here is a mailing address with a type of object, but we don't just have it as a type of object. We also need to define the items inside of the object. For instance, we have mailing address dot street and mailing address dot city. Or if something was an array, an array of objects, you would do it like so with a dollar sign. So let's go ahead and head this uh, secondary properties in here. For instance, sure, item one is a type of object, but we could also have inside of a string item one dot and inside of here text now let's come here item one dot text and this is going to be equal to a type of string okay now in addition we'll also have item one dot value item one dot value and item one dot value is going to be the type of an integer now, how do we use a type of integer? We saw this before. If we want it to be an integer, we want to actually have it be simple schema dot integer. Reason being is integer is not an actual type in JavaScript. 
Okay. So just like that, we have item one dot text, item two dot text with their types. And if this seems overly obtuse as well, this will be changing. So don't stress it. But to see all this written out is maybe a little bit more obvious to what's going on. We have item one dot text is a string. Item two dot value is a uh, integer. Item two dot or item two is an object where item two dot text is a string. Okay, so on and so forth. Now, another thing that we're going to be getting hit on is that this assumes that last updated is going to be presented into our schema every single time. In fact, if we wanted this to not, and in fact, if we wanted anything to be optional, right, we need to specifically state that something is optional. Setting optional is equal to true. So if we wanted this to work as is, we would need to say comma optional is equal to true. So check it out. We now have these items are all going to be required because required is the default and last updated is going to be optional. We can change that in a minute if you'd like. Well, let's head in here and let's try this out again. We want to say pen versus pencil. Let's add items. And let's see if uh, we have any major errors there. In general, we don't have any errors. Let's go ahead and vote for water or beer. And you'll notice pen and pencil have showed up in our voting. This is great because what this means is that our schema is now officially working, which is a great thing because we just took all that time and it seemed like it was really roundabout, right? Uh, typically, it won't be that way. But because all of these things have changed recently, I wanted to make sure you sort of got the picture. So what we have here is we have our uh, simple schema, which is a node package. We're using collection two, which extends Mongo collection. And then we're defining our schema. And then we're saying, hey, attach the schema to the collection. Now, every single time we need to insert it, uh, we make sure that everything is validated correctly. And in fact, we can get rid of these checks now, right? I mean, you might want to check this if you're doing a little bit more database-y stuff, but hey, before it inserts, it's going to make sure that item one is a string and item two is a string. So we don't really need to check that anymore. So that's just some of the benefits here. We're getting a little bit of validation here. There's also some really great form generators for both Blaze and React, so we can auto-generate forms off of our schema. In the next video, we're gonna break this down a little bit more. We're gonna make this schema to its fullest potential, and you'll see how this simple schema right now, which is not simple, this is not simple. Uh, this simple schema is gonna get really simple, so don't worry about this. Uh, craziness here. You probably won't write schemas that look like this that often. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. In the next video, we're going to keep on going with Simple Schema, a package that is well, well, well worth your time. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, or hit me up at Twitter or Facebook. If you want to catch the rest of this series, head to store.leveluptutorials.com. Dot com and purchase this series or become a Level Up Pro by subscribing to Level Up Tutorials. We're going to be handling all sorts of more stuff. We're going to cover like routing parameters. I'm going to show you some really cool uh, ES2017 syntax stuff. We're going to be using decorators. We're going to be using things like uh, auto bind. I'll show you exactly what's cool about that. I'm going to be going over animations. We're going to be uh, getting into user roles and role based permissions. We're going to be talking a little bit more about Meteor publications. We're going to be talking about uh, server side private settings, all sorts of that good stuff. So keep on watching and we're going to have a lot of great content in this Meteor Intermediate series.